Hello, everyone. Welcome to PSCZ Learning, entitled Making Noise. This is Steve Cowan, and you'll soon hear from Terry. Hi, everyone. This segment is going to be pre-recorded, so we will not be exchanging questions with you. But if you should have a particular question regarding this e-learning session, please don't hesitate to give PSC a call. They'll direct your question, and we'll get an answer back to you. Here we go. All right, Steve, I love this, making noise, making noise. And people say, what does she mean by that when I'm saying this salon isn't making enough noise or this business isn't making enough noise or this business is, is dead? Um, it's because every business has a song that it's singing. When you walk in the doors, you can feel something either really magical or really flatline about it. I've been in salons sometimes that don't turn all the lights on because there's only two hairdressers working and they only turn the ones in the front <laughs> and maybe just one row and the other place is dark. And and I've gone, yoo-hoo, anyone here? And they'll say, yeah, we're open. Well, it really didn't feel like you were open. So every decision that you make in your business when you're open has to say you're open and poised and ready for business at the top of your voice. So. Let's just go on a little journey with making noise and see where it takes us. Great. I, I love this because everyone knows we love sports and we love baseball and we always use analogies, but I think this one really hits home when you think about have you ever been to a Little League baseball game or did you yourself play Little League or organize sport when you were younger? And even as a parent now, if you're watching your children play, you'll hear the coach Coach, do you like that? You'll hear the coach, coach yelling to the boys, Coach, starting at a very young age. Come on, you guys, let's hear some chatter out there. And then they all go, hey, better, better, hey, better, better. It's just funny to me that they, that they start yelling that and they know what that means. But why is the coach saying to the boys, let's hear some chatter out there? Why is that? Let's go to the next slide, Brian. Thank you. Well, one of the reasons is, is that coach from his position and his viewpoint of watching the game is that his team looks flat. His team looks like they're bored out of their mind, that they're not having fun, that they're not ready to play the game, that they're not ready should the ball be hit to them. He's trying to fire them up. He's trying to get them to, hey, look like you love the game of baseball. Get in the game. Get your head in the game. Know what you're going to do if the ball's hit to you. What are you going to do in any situation? And they'll always say, between pitches, you have to think about, if it comes to me, what am I going to do? Because the profile of the game could change. Someone could steal a base, or or someone could have um, bases loaded. And what Where am I going to go if the ball comes to me? I, need to not, I don't have time to think when it gets here. I have to think ahead of time. They want to get the crowd to be part of the game. You want to get everyone fired up. You want the players to connect with the game. You want to win the game, and sometimes that that noise that the crowd creates is, a, is almost an extra player on the field. That's why they call it home field advantage. You bring more energy and passion to the game. But the biggest thing is, is playing the game should be fun, really fun, and never bored or boring. Now, have you gone into businesses that look like their best days are behind them? Then they're not having fun anymore, that they've, they've retired yet they're still working. And we're trying to fire them up because the beauty industry never should be bored or boring. This is the beauty industry. And we're trying to fire them up and make some noise. And the noise starts within the four walls of where we are. And then it can extend, extend out beyond that, which we're going to have that conversation as we, as we progress during this e-learning. But I can tell you that you need to be able to judge the passion and energy of your team when you're in front of it. I can tell you from a standpoint of, the seven people that report to me, I'll get in a meeting with them and I think, my goodness, I couldn't be more bored, you couldn't be more boring, and <laughs> now I'm boring, and now what are we going to get accomplished in this kind of atmosphere? And I'll say, hey, bring your energy up or, or I don't want to be in here. Because being in the beauty industry, we should still have our best days, our best ideas, our best noise ahead of us. And if it's behind us, there's a really a really big problem and sometimes it's a bigger problem than we even know how to communicate with. Steve, do you want to say anything about, about that well, part I, I just, before we move on? I just think, I just think that the, the noise that we see people trying to make right now in the salon industry is in social media. 
And I, I think that if the noise and we're making in social noise. media is, is louder than the noise that we're making inside of our own four walls, then, then I've kind of got a then I kind of got a problem with that. You know, we need to make sure that that the uh, electricity that we're showing, that we're trying to show on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and the likes, uh, we've got to make sure that that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, each and every team member, each you know, in each and every guest, because if not, we're we're going to disappoint their expectation. If it looks like you got to be there, this is a fun place. They do beautiful work. Their people are on fire. And then they get there, and, and everybody's making the donuts. We're gonna we're gonna miss the opportunity to connect with them. I think back well, to this past weekend, um, there was a lot of noise on on Facebook um, about the Intercafure meeting that was in New York. It was their big atelier, and I'll, I'll tell you what. I mean, all weekend long, the friends of of ours that were out at Intercafure, either participating as a student, as a salon, as presenters. Uh, were were electric. They, I mean, I just it made me want to be there, and and that's on 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 Facebook. Now, imagine what it must have been like. And and I was able because some posted video, I was able to see and feel what it was like there, and it was every bit that. So what what are we doing? And and I I also think Terry, when you give this the sports analogy, something has always kind of confused me about the chatter or the noise of sports and that's that when people are little league when they're you know six years old seven eight nine the amount of people that show up for the games and cheer them on and all oh, that's cute and give them encouragement uh, is is incredible and it gets less and less and less the older the players get until you get to the pros and then when they're when they're pros we all go and we cheer them on again and we scream and yell and holler and, and sometimes make fools of ourselves uh, rooting a team on in a good way, fools of ourselves, but in a good way. And, and you sit there and think, okay, what's the disconnect? When do we stop needing that kind of noise? When do we stop needing that kind of encouragement and that kind of connection? And, and I think we never stop needing it. We just stop getting it sometimes. So I love this topic because it's, it's uh, you know it's it's every bit about about what song are we singing? What songs are business singing? What kind of noise are we making? What kind of involvement is it? One or two players or, or one or two of our team members, or is it everybody? Can you tell that they love it uh, when they're working on a guest? We were at a high school baseball game years ago when Doug was playing. And they had a really talented athlete on the team. He was pitching that day. And this field was a high school field, so it wasn't that big. And it was, this pitcher got the third out. And he, you know how long it is between innings. This young man, I told Steve, look at this kid. This young man took the whole, it was almost the entire time that the teams were changing from offense to defense. He still wasn't off the field yet. He was still walking. And I thought, could anyone walk slower? Could anyone look more bored or lazy in their whole life? And if you would have said the word hustle to him, he would have thought you had 17 heads. And I looked over at Steve and I said, if I ever played for a coach that let me take my position on the field that casual, I would have, I would have been benched for sure if I didn't hustle off the field. Hustle on, hustle off. Hustle on, hustle off. And that's what we're looking for, is your business making noise. Do they hustle in? Do they hustle out? Do they walk in the door saying, oh, God, I don't want to be here. Oh, God, do you want to be here? I don't want to be here. Or, hey, let's do some great hair today. Come on. Let's all get in. Let's play house. Let's have fun. Here we go. And only you know what it's like in your business. Are they in the game? Is the crowd part of the game, the positive side of the game, or are they complaining about the game? And, and this negative conversation that's happening is one that can really kill the noise level of your business. Because usually when, when there's uncomfortable conversations taking place, even with the customer, we lean in, we whisper in their ear a little bit, and it's not a positive environment. You're going to notice when we close today, Social media is very, very important in making noise, but it's going to be the last 
the last slide that we talk about is our social media presence. Everything else before that, we feel, is more important. So let's talk about community noise. We talked about briefly just now the salon noise, and we're going to come back into it. But let's talk about the community's perception of the noise you're making. The signage, they need to know that you are there. They need to know your sign, your salon, and it brings joy to them to see your sign. From the outside, you look positive. From the outside, you look current. From the outside, you look like you're ready to do great hair. I love what's going on in, in sports. I wish I would have thought of it when, when I was growing up. I love when you drive through a neighborhood now in the high school if someone plays volleyball, there's a volleyball in their yard with their number on it. And there's a football in the yard with their number on it. So we know we're driving by an athlete that plays this sport and they live here. And it all supports the high school connection or the community connection. That's, that's a school making noise in the community, too, to root on their athletes. Right, Steve? Absolutely. You know, it, it lets others in. Yeah, what it does. the key thing is, is that, yeah, I mean, you think, oh, that's my ne my neighbor's playing for them. That's so cool. And and even if you never go to a game, you're, you're invested. You're connected. Or you want to know how they're doing. So, for example, it sure. just brings awareness. Okay, so now it's game day. What is, I don't know, it's going to sound corny, but I love game day when I was growing up. I love game day. I love the band marching in the halls of the school. I love the pep rallies that, that we led for the school as I cheered for many years. And game day always created this different level. I love, I love the fall so much, not just because of the burning leaves, but what the fall represented to me was some of the best celebrations that I had with my classmates and my community during football season. Fall means football. Fall means excitement. Fall means rooting people on and having the community all celebrate together. It was huge noise. So what does game day look like in your salon? Is Saturday's game day because you're all there? Some people say Saturday's the best day because we're all here. Well, to me, that's game day. But what happens if you could create five game days a week versus one? How do you create your best day. And some people all say Thursday night, that's game day. Okay. Why isn't Tuesday night's game day? What do we need to do so we look like a contender five days a week? Make sure your hours support the noise footprint you want to make. And that's my next point on here. Do they make noise at the top of the salon's voice every day? Do your salon hours allow that? And remember, some people say, well, you know, my staff and they can't and well and so now you're you're jeopardizing your noise footprint and I'm, I'm really big on this because I love when I walk in a business that means it one time a couple years ago there were 11 or 12 of us that went down to we were opening a store in Mount Vernon we since have closed that location but I think 11 of us went down because we got the whole move done in one day and our staff worked hard and I looked out and said, hey, all of you, I'm going to give you pizza for lunch and I'll feed you really well tonight and we can break bread together and laugh how tired we are and dirty we are. So I called over to the, the local steakhouse. Brian, do you remember this? Lone Star it was. It's Lone Star right next door almost. And I said, I'm bringing 12 people over or 11, whatever, and we'll be over shortly and they're hungry and I want to spoil them and we're going to eat. Okay. We walk in and... Uh, they closed. They were closing in an hour. So they weren't closed yet. It was a Sunday night, and they weren't closed yet, but you could tell they were already closed mentally. We walked in, and I said, hi, Cowan, party of 11 or 12. And they said, yeah, we're trying to figure out if someone wants to take you, if, if they could find a waitress that was willing to take us. Now, little did they know that we were going to eat and eat fast because we're beat and we want to get to bed. But they were begging people to service us. What kind of noise was that restaurant making that night? And that was a choice they were making. And I told the manager when I saw him, I said, this isn't your staff's fault. This is your fault. When is it okay to ever, in business, refuse a customer? Now, does it happen in our salons on occasion? Sure, where we say, yeah, I don't want that walk-in. No, I took the last one last Tuesday. Give it to someone else this time. 
I know going home is important sometimes, but usually we want to go home when we've allowed our energy and noise to drop down. Because as soon as you bring it down, it's hard to bring it back up. So do you know what kind of noise your salon is putting out there every day? And I really want you to think about this because noise and success gives birth to new success. And when you're part of something like, you've got to get there. You've got to get to this salon. I mean, they're creating magic every day in there, and they're having a ball versus, oh, there's not that many people there, and I don't know what kind of staff they have. You want your customer to understand your footprint so well that they almost give the speech on your behalf. All right, let's talk about showing up. Steve, this is your topic. Well, I think it's... I mean, do we know? Do we know what showing up means in our salon? Do we know when our when our team is showing up? And and what we mean by that is showing up, looking right, right energy, ready to go, ready to serve the public, uh, one guest at a time in 30 to 60 minute increments, and create a repeat guest and create a magical salon experience. That's there's all kinds of you know. Years ago, Terry did a uh, did an exercise with show up words. Knowing that when you, when when she would show up, you could count on these three things from her. What are the three things that we're counting on when our team shows up? And I, I think it's so easy to to just kind of get into a rhythm of open the door, let people in, service them, let them out, and and close just trust everybody's to doing their best and close it down at night and make the deposit. And and I think that it can be so much more than that. I, I was talking to someone today, and I, I looked, and I said, we get to do this. We get to do this business. Some people, I, I can't imagine uh, other people's jobs and the fact that they go to jobs that I don't consider, they wouldn't motivate me. They, they wouldn't be uh, diverse enough. They wouldn't be significant enough. I'm glad they do them because we need people in all different walks of life, but we get to do this. We touch people in a very special way, and we, we make a difference in their lives, and they celebrate our lives with us, and, and we're, it's beauty. It's beauty, and all things beauty. And, and, and so who is leading that charge uh, amongst your staff? Do we, I mean, for lack of a better word, the, the cheerleaders, the, the, the people that are always up. I, mean, I can think of them in, you know, in, in my world, the people that I can always count on I know they're smiling before I see them. I know they're smiling when I'm talking to them on the phone. I know that they're they're bringing their best their A game every every time they show up. And who are those people in our salon? And how can we acknowledge that so that we get more and more and more of it? I love that. And the other part that I that I want to show is sometimes people will put effort into something they're not getting a response from. Now, this is going to be a crazy analogy, but I hope it helps. Every year I go back for my little cheerleader reunion, and I'm one of the oldest cheerleaders on the field, which is kind of funny. But I, I walk into the field, and they have the band at one end at a, at a, a goal post. And they have the student section at the other goal post in the end zone. Then they have this, the parents in the middle. Now, first of all, the parents, God bless them, they just watch the ball game. The student section is obnoxious and rowdy and crazy, and the band is also to support the team. The cheerleaders are standing right in front of the parents who wouldn't yell anything out and join in with them unless it was two simple words. And these girls are doing these, these long, crazy cheers, and the parents are just looking at them and don't understand a word they say. And I had to ask their cheerleading coach, why are these girls cheering here? Because no one cares. Go to where the noise is. Go where you're going to get the biggest response. And, and that's what I want to say in business, too. Are we sometimes trying to cheer on people or trying to make noise with people that we're getting no response from? Make sure you're putting effort out where you're getting a response back. And that's, that would aggravate me to cheer my heart out and, and have everyone look at me like, like, why are you here? You're a waste of time. And, and sometimes that happens in business, too. So either they have to position their crowds differently or position themselves differently to get the impact they want to make. And they'll say, we're so frustrated. 
we're not getting a response from the community. Of course you're not, because you're not standing in the right place. That happens in business, too. So I hope that was a good analogy. Now, giving back. The community noise, um, I think sometimes I'm looking back and, and I, I hear people say, I can't get my people to, to participate, or they'll all say that they'll do it. I'll get 10 nods, and then it's the same three people doing things over and over again. One of the things that you have to insist upon in your leadership is the noise that you make outside the business. And if you do too much, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take its toll on your staff. Make sure you do enough that everyone can do it and have it not be a distraction. Make sure you give enough back, but not at the expense of their families and private life. Meaning, if we give people two or three days a year that we're going to do something to give back, I think they can do that. If you're doing 16 of them, I think it's unrealistic. So make sure you're pacing what they're capable of doing, and they'll give you the noise you want to hear. Because if it's too much, they stop going to everything, and then they just kind of hide in the background. Steve, don't you notice that's even in the schools? Uh, I do. You know, I was thinking of a conversation I had with with someone uh, just the other day. I felt like it was right out of Mr. Holland's opus because. Oh yeah, the compass. Yeah, because I I, I said to this person, I said, you know, you're not known for someone that does anything extra. You're here, you, you're here in the morning, you teach all day, you go home at night, but you're not known for volunteering for anything extra. And the job that you're interviewing for requires extra. Tell me why that's all of a sudden going to change. And it was it was interesting because there was something underneath that. There was a reason why that person wasn't giving extra. and, and uh, I needed them to say that. But the fact of the matter is, is that, yeah, I think of the analogy of the, of the fist. And when you make a fist and, and you, you grip your hand tightly, the strength and the power that you have, but as soon as you peel one finger away, your grip is less than 50% of what it was. And, and that's sometimes what happens with events. If you have too many events, it's like peeling those fingers back and you have less and less grip, which means in business, less and less control, less and less involvement of your people because what you've done is, is you've just kind of spread it out. You've just kind of taken away the power of being together uh, at, at an event. Well, the other thing I'm thinking about is no, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Can you believe that? Okay, I'm sorry. Well, the other thing okay. about giving back and, and, and less events is, is you're more meaningful to the people that you're involved with, the benefactors of your of your effort. Sometimes if you're doing so many different things and you do little things uh, for everybody, you're not being meaningful to any to anybody really. That's a good point. So, so now we're going to talk about open houses. Could you create open houses for your top customers? Could you feature two hairdressers in a night and have them open, but the rest of the staff is there to support them? Could you also uh, have it be in uh, conjunction with a, a fun, fundraising event? How are we celebrating new talent and talent promotions? That creates noise in the, in the community. VIP events for, once again, you could do a VIP release with a new product, a new service, and invite people in. You could have friends and family specials. So, but these all have to be planned in advance to have them be something that we know in the calendar. Do not give hairdressers, busy hairdressers, busy mothers, busy wives, two-week notice. And if you are a just-in-time leader, you're going to have people that resent that because Sometimes, and I can tell you that we've got we've got leadership that are planners, and we have leadership in our company that are in the moment. And sometimes, I mean, you need both of them because the spontaneous things that the in the moments can think of is something the planners didn't even consider. However, when it comes to people having to give extra, you've got to give them enough notice, especially women, because that's how they think telling Steve years ago, um, he, he, when we first were, were um, dating, he would get on the phone with his, his two boys 
and the conversation with his boys was so easy. Hi, how you doing? Are you watching Sports Center? What do you think? Oh, ah, ah, and boys talk. And I would sit there thinking, this is so ridiculous. It doesn't even mean anything, but it was a great conversation for their, the dad, Steve, and his boys to have. Then he'd get on the phone with his two girls, and it, it wasn't as natural. It wasn't as easy. His questions weren't as easy. He really didn't know what to talk about, right? And then what did I say to you, Steve? What did I say? Girls are always looking forward to the next big thing, the next big event. They always, they always know the next big thing or the thing that they're thinking about that's coming up. And I said, Steve, all you have to do is say one question. What is it? What are you looking forward to? What are you excited about? That's exactly right. And they'll go on and on. And Mary's got a party. And I've got dance class. And this one's this. And this one's that. And all Steve had to do was ask questions about the future because most women are planners like that. Same thing holds true. When you're talking about with your customers, what's coming up in the future? Or let us tell you what's going up in the future and what we're celebrating and what we're working on and a VIP event and I'm having an open house. Women love that. Absolutely love it. And, and it can make a lot of noise for you. And then also, when you've got things that are happening in your, in your salon and your customers can be a part of your future, that's where the community noise comes in, right? Sure. Honey, are you still there? Good. I'm still here. Okay. Let's talk about oh, I did that. Okay. Let's talk about spas check. Just gonna give you a brief thing. Remember, the four things customers are looking for to be outstanding for them to return. And if you don't pass all these, you flunk all of them. They're looking for contagious, outstanding service. Contagious product selection and availability. They're looking for atmosphere that meets their needs, that creates an environment that they are drawn to. And they're looking for everything to be absolutely perfectly clean and sanitation to be the utmost. Okay, so let's talk about how do you make, uh oh, what did I do, Brian? Okay, how do you make noise in the salon? When you think about the culture, the energy, what is your culture of energy throughout the day. And I love when people are checking on teammates throughout the day. How do we get people back in the game? And, and we need you out here. Here we go. We create an environment of teamwork and we insist on it. That's how you have to say it. We insist on it here. When you're interviewing or looking for people. I think we might have said this um, in an, a previous recording, but when I'm out here busting my tail and I'm busy and three of you are in the back room having a ball and fun because you think it's downtime or break time, I, it almost creates resentment with me for the someone because I really could use you right now. I could use you to make this pace right now a little easier for the customer and for me. And so the noise in the salon is, is the culture of energy and commitment to each other. That is, that is really, really huge. And it's obvious when it's present in a business. How about when you're in a restaurant and someone says, I'll get your server or I'll get your waitress versus saying, how can I be of assistance? Because I'm equipped too. What can I do? And I'll take care of Let Mary know is something else such a difference than I'll get your waitress over here. I can't stand people that don't have any interest in, in connecting with anyone else's customer. Noise and services, you connect with all guests. You connect with everybody, not just your own. You connect with all guests. That's how you make noise and service. And you celebrate the craft, meaning that is great hair you're doing today. Man, we love being hairdressers in here. You celebrate the service that we're doing because you're making sure all the little things are in place, whether it's, it's the quality of the shampoo, the quality of the com conversation, the quality of um, professional recommendation. So much of it is the noise. People judge us on our conversation. Our service is our conversation with the guest. So is it, is it positive? It's beyond everybody else's who's trying to compete with us? I mean, where are we? And when you celebrate these three things, you're really making noise in the service category. The next one is, is how do you make noise in product? Of course, it's the quality of the work because that's our product that's going out, but 
it's obvious we celebrate color in here. We talk about it. We share with them how much um, we enjoy this category, that everyone in the salon has color. Our visuals are color. We have a color bar, perhaps, an exposed dispensary. We celebrate grooming, all different kinds of cuts. We have uh, all of our, um, our inspirational images all of our inspirational images on our, our uh, iPads, and we have inspiration boards. We have options in here. We're experts in this category. And when you look at it, it's not, I hope they don't ask me to do that unique new service. It's, you're poised like, I can't wait for them to ask me about this new service, because I can't wait to talk about it and show what we're committed to. And so you know, many Terry, people. Go ahead, Terry. I'm always surprised. I'm always surprised that we don't make more use of our station area style styles area to show doll heads on tripods and show the, the current fashion and style. Celebrate the haircuts that you're doing, the the, the new fashion. Celebrate the, the the color technique and and color selection that you're that you're using. Celebrate your your ability in men's grooming. All of those things are are so they're so important. Well, we're watching. I'm watching, and I think Steve's watched out of default. I'm watching Project Runway this year, and I've never really watched this show before, but I'm drawn. I think it's their 14th season, and and it's just it's just getting better. But I always um, record it, and then I watch it at the end because I just really don't want to see the end work. I really don't like seeing the process. But one of the things that they always say to the, them when they say, okay, bring your model out, and then the first question the judges ask is, what's your inspiration? What's your inspiration for this, for this design or this look? Can you imagine if, if we said that to hairdressers, what's your inspiration right now? What are the, what's the season's top ten looks? What are the things that people are talking about? Sometimes they keep that all in their head versus, in Steve's words, display your inspiration. Dis display what you're working on. Display what's, what's getting you excited about hair right now. And I was sitting at uh, dinner with Jean Braun and Stephanie Kachowski a week ago and to watch two hairdressers talk about what's still inspiring them. And Jean still does mannequins and she's retired. And we're going to try to bring her out of retirement next year a little bit, but Stephanie and Jean had a conversation about hair that I couldn't completely understand, but all I knew is I absolutely enjoyed every second of it, thinking, okay, do that on me. What are you talking about? Do that on me. And that's exactly what you want to happen. When people love what they do, when an expert is talking, it's just so obvious. You're in an expert's, an expert's surroundings, right? Okay, next right. slide. Noise and atmosphere. If you make noise in your atmosphere, is it a perfect environment? Is um, is that something special in place? You know, music is key, and your scent is key. Image is key. I mean, it's a charming atmosphere to be in. And charming doesn't always mean charming like a little cottage out in the woods. Charming is just everything is is in place, and it feels so great to be serviced in this environment. It's like a beautiful vanity. That's what our salon should be like. And attention to detail is key. When you look at atmosphere, presentation is a part of atmosphere. And how we present color, or how we put our coloring bowls down, or do we present it on a tray or cart service? I don't know, but I think you can make more noise in front of the guest, proving to them that you're fussing over them. And when you look at the atmosphere, we're ahead of slide. We're looking. OK. Are we going? OK, did I, did I make Hello? a mistake? OK, sorry. So now we're going to sanitation. So when we look at sanitation, as far as, and that's the next slide, Brian. Dutch clean and have everything in its place is so impressive. Lack of clutter, lack of organization, 
lack of discipline, that's obvious too. It's obvious when it's right, and it's so obvious when it's wrong. And uh, not taking care of the property so it's right for the guest's eyes is, is going to cost you. I mean, reputation creates noise. Have you ever had people say, oh my gosh, this woman, you can eat off her floor? Well, sometimes in a salon, that would never be said. And a tired business does not create noise. And just the opposite is true. And what I want to say to you that on this, and, and it's something that I think uh, Steve and I talk about a lot, you must have some financial room in your budget to keep your business looking good. And if you spend all of it on the build out on the front side, later on you don't have any room sometimes to keep the business looking charming. And the little things can give it a, a new look or, or, or painting enough or keeping the right visuals in place, but you've got to have financial room to keep the business looking charming. And sanitation, everyone's responsible for sanitation. I know they are here at PSC. And I'm on it. I, I hate this category and I love this category at, at the same time because there's such a sense of pride when the business looks the right way. You know what, Terry, that I notice on, on so much of, of this particular topic is is that we're, we're talking about things that require time and attention and, yes, energy, but also things that are never, ever completed. As long as you're, as long as you're open for business, you're going to have to chase these things. You're going to have to chase sanitation. You're going to have to chase your, 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 your product and your atmosphere and, you hate and, this. and, the, and well, the service level. You can talk to this because you hate it. Well, there's parts of it I, I hate, yeah. I mean, I, I love the finished product. I, I love when it's in place, but I, I hate being the the worker bee that has to <laughs> do the or sanitation. <laughs> or tell the people that you don't you don't like saying, "Look, we need to bring this up a notch." That's not your favorite. Part. Oh, I I just don't like to steal any of your enjoyment because <laughs> you like okay. that so much. That was a good recovery. <laughs> I mean, I know right now I've got some things weighing on me, some areas that are are sloppier than others, and I've got to I've got to give it attention, roll my sleeves up, and how good am I going to feel when it's done? You know, when you're when you're hosting, the the effort we put into hosting something is the effort we have to put in every day if we're going to protect and keep our customers feeling like they're in good hands with us. And, and you have no idea what kind of noise that makes for the customer. It's huge. And it's so obvious when a business has gotten tired and outdated. And sometimes scent can just change that, just all by itself. OK, let's talk about some social media noise. Steve, do you need to leave us? Um, no, I, had, I, I rescheduled that, Terry. OK. I had to cancel it. I wouldn't be there. All right. OK, so social media noise, let's talk about that because this is important too, but it's not more important than the other things we talked about. Right now, it's becoming equally important. So if we look at look at all the things that are listed, and Steve, you, you can speak better to social media than me because of, but there's some, oh, what do I want to say in this? I've got salons that do this extremely well that I know every time I go into my feeds, they're going to be in there. I know there's also salons that don't do it well. So, Steve, go ahead. You start on this. Well, if, most certainly, this is also something that's, that's never, ever finished. You look at the very first one, website. Um, there are very few salons where their website is an asset. Um, and I'm not sure that it, that it needs to be, but it's something that's needs to be on someone's radar to check on a regular basis and make sure that it's putting out the image that you want it to put out. Uh, add something. Realize that your website is one of the key things that will, um, that will feed your Google rating, your search 
your organic search, uh, where you come up. Uh, everybody wants to be on, on page one of Google on a search for, for cosmetology salons, beauty salons, hair salons, etc. And, and really, that's not going to happen in a website that's stagnant, that no one ever posts anything new to, uh, that, that, uh, that no one is going to because of that. I know that a lot of us want to live in Facebook and Instagram because that's where we believe our target customer is. Uh, which is all fine, and I think the the key is is if you're posting pictures there, bring them back. If someone clicks or likes on a picture, uh, bring your Instagram and your Facebook feeds into your website so that it's doing something for your website as well. Same the same with blogs. Blogs don't have to be this uh, huge thing. They can be just they can be a photo and a, a current photo and a little bit of information and then post it through all the way through on Instagram uh, but more importantly in a blog area of your website because that's regular unique uh, information on your website that's going to make a difference. YouTube channel, have a YouTube channel. Google owns YouTube. If you want great ratings on, on, uh, on Google in order to move up on organic searches, play in their, uh, in their YouTube world. Contests, um, I, I think that it's always good to draw, um, have, your, have your staff put out various looks and have people vote on them. Do, do some, anything that allows uh, more likes to your Facebook page. So if you're having a contest, uh, it can be that they have to like the page before they can vote in the, uh, in the contest itself. And then you find a way to go from you know a thousand likes to two thousand likes just with one content, just with one contest. Um, if you're doing things in the community from a charitable standpoint, those are always good things to to post. Post something, not uh, you know not way too much, but just the right amount. They say twice a day uh, is is adequate to post um, on your on your Facebook or Instagram. Selfie walls. Well, what do you think about outsourcing before you talk about selfie walls? Well, I think I think it is something that can be outsourced, but if you outsource it, that person has to have a connection on the inside because they don't know what it's like to live inside your salon, inside your four walls. They're not there while you're having a celebrity guest. Uh, and celebrity doesn't mean Deborah Messing or, or uh, Harrison Ford or Tom, uh, you know, Tom Hanks. Celebrity means... Somebody, you know, you're, you're somebody in your town, somebody that's well known in your town. They're not there to see when you're doing something extraordinary in your salon, and so they're they're relied they rely on you telling them. So that's the downside of outsourcing. It is that you have to have someone who keeps them in the loop regularly with current information, current notable things that that go on in your business every single day. Now, what about Periscope? Brian just said that to me. Periscope is, is becoming a way of the, of the future. Uh, you know, it's, it's so interesting because um, the car that I, that I drive launched the new version of that car on a live Periscope uh, uh, session. More and more, if you look at whether it be Christian Awesome or ben Benjamin Jay or Hairbrained, uh, Vivian McKinder, all of those people are using uh, they're using Periscope in our business. The the Scorum barbers are are using uh, Periscope as a way to bring people in live to an event. Uh, Robert Cromines brought his uh, his London show broadcast the prep for the London show and the actual show itself. Uh, on Periscope. So it's becoming a place, a gathering place for live events. And so uh, I, I think that it can be excellent, absolutely excellent. So I just told, I told Brian, are we doing that in 2016, Steve? Should PSC be doing well, that too? I'm hoping some of our sneak peek, some of our uh, event Monday is going to be, uh, the big tease is going to, I hope that that'll be broadcast on, on uh, Periscope as well. We hope Mondays will be, okay. Brian's eyebrows are way up. So anyway, I, I want to also talk about the YouTube channel again. And 
a salon could create their own YouTube channel for their customers, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, with, absolutely, and that will help them with their Google rating. And with education. And, and saying this is the new product that we're releasing, YouTube, we're giving you instruction on how to use it and such. And that'd be very powerful. And the kids, even if an owner is my age on the phone, they've got people working for them that would be very comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, and Terry, think about it. The, the, uh, the, the sessions that we were blessed to be in with American Salon, the best advice, uh, that, that's an idea that can totally be stolen and put Absolutely. up for a salon, what's best advice for morning time? What's best advice for using a flat iron? What's best advice for maintaining color-treated hair? What's best advice for uh, thinning hair? What's, I mean, best advice for the holiday giving season? Uh, but all those different is, things. But it lives on YouTube, is. and then it's, it's brought over and linked in Facebook and Instagram. Okay, it's done in YouTube, and it's brought over and linked in Facebook and YouTube. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, so here, here's the thing though. This could have gotten someone really, really excited to create social media noise. However, it doesn't matter if the noise on a daily basis live isn't right. That's no doubt. the whole point. That's the whole point. I mean, if we're not living what we are committed to do on a daily basis, you can't have YouTube better be cha better than than actually going to the salon. Oh, YouTube's really good. Going to the salon, oh, not so much. I mean, that doesn't work together. And the other thing, I remember the first time that we coached Robert Croman's salon, and I had to say to him, you know, your salon is better from a distance, and it's up, up close and real. I was more impressed with the Robert Croman's organization while in Chicago than I am standing in the salon. And the same holds true. A, a customer could be drawn by everything you're doing social media. And then they get in there and say, you know, from a distance you were better. That's why making noise has to be correct in all areas. And, you know, Robert really understood that statement because especially when you're under the microscope like my, Robert Cromings is, what does the customer, what's the consumer, what does the industry professional think a Robert Cromings salon should be? And that's a tall order for them to fill and one that they should never take lightly. Same holds true for your, your staff members. Tall order to fill. Don't take it lightly. And so the focus on creating all these enhancements, please don't start at social media. That's the last page. We gotta make noise in all the other areas equally. And in some cases, that noise footprint that you're making in your salon on a daily basis is probably, to me, and, and Steve can add, at his opinion here, but is probably the most important. Well, and, and, and I think that one of the questions that if, if I were on the clinic floor here in school, or if I was in a salon and I saw a stylist finish with a guest, my question would be is, are you proud of it? Are you proud of what you just did? Because I think when you ask that question, what you're really saying is, do you think what you just did is going to make noise? Because that's, that's really how I translate that. The, the, the noise comes from people being proud of what they've just done, of what they do on a daily basis. It's, it is that sense of pride. It's one of the greatest things to raise self-image is to do something you're proud of. Oh, it's one gosh, of the, the you know, and, and if we're not doing things we're proud of every single day, there's no way we're going to have any kind of energy to create noise in our communities or even outside the four walls of our salon. So how can we raise that pride factor? How can we, how can we get people asking um, after every guest, am I, proud of my, am I proud of what I just did? What could I do better? What do I need to focus on, on the, next, the next time I see them but on the next guest that sits in my chair? Mm -hmm. you, you, write a, you write a blog. What am I proud of about that? Am I proud of that blog? And if, if you're not, don't post it. Am I proud of that photo that I just took? If you're not, don't post it. Well, and Just then, refine and then it. Practice, practice, another, practice, practice. And another live way to make noise is, you know, inviting, inviting people, maybe top customers, to come in and watch you do a photo shoot. Or your models are your top customers for photo shoots in the salon. That makes noise, too, because now you're asking people, 
you're a top customer of our salon. We'd like to know, could we, could you be part of a photo shoot of the new collection that we're doing? Come on, that's making noise too. And mm -hmm. there's so many ways to say thank you that equates to noise. And that's a, that's a powerful position to be in with your customers in your community. Well, I hope you love this topic, especially getting ready to go into, once again, the holiday season, which is sometimes the noisiest time of year. Make sure that we're doing things on purpose and not by, it's so busy. Sometimes busy can be an excuse versus uh, a discipline. And uh, we wish you a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. And we're, we're ready to create some great new ideas with you for 2016. Here we go. Let 2016 be the year that you uh, that you dream about. Let it be the year that you break out of your your existing comfort zone. Try something to really stretch. They say that a mind once stretched never returns to its original size. A business once stretched never returns to its original size. How can we stretch? What's what are going to be our stretch items in 2016? Maybe it's that photo shoot. Maybe it's entering Naha. Maybe it's entering the Cosmetology Chicago Midwest or ABS uh, show um, photo shoot. There's lots of different things that can be done. Do things that nurture your soul, your creative soul, and that raise the noise level of your business. And know that at PSC, we're here to cheer you on, to, to uh, challenge you, and to support you every step of the way through it. Thanks so much for go, listening. Go hit some home runs out there. Have a great day.